Warhammer the Old World might come back soon, with two nearly forgotten factions returning. The Tomb Kings and my personal favorite, Britonia. The knights from old with those heroic poses, vibrant colors and heraldic symbols are just awesome. Obviously the new miniatures are not out yet, but I really want to paint one of those glorious knights. So in this video I kept Bash one and painted battle ready with some <laughs> freehand on the armor and the shield. Hi, my name is Toby and this is Paint Quest. Let's get started. The base for this conversion will be a broken Stormcast Eternal. Maybe we won't need this arm, so this is not as bad as it looks. This miniature needs to lose its head, so the first step will be to get a new one. In my youth I actually had the 1996 starter box with Lizardman vs. Britonia. I wish I would still have that stuff, but over a decade ago I sold off everything. Fortunately, not so long ago I acquired an old collection with some bits and pieces from the old Warhammer fantasy. And that's where we'll get the hat from. As you decided in a poll on my YouTube community page, the Lion vs. the Stag, the stack won in a landslide. So, dear viewer, your will shall be done. It's time to give this knight his mighty helmet. This is going to fit great after we make some room here for the helmet and the cloth connected to that. But before we continue with the challenge to make the helmet actually fit, we should design the pose for our noble knight of old. I want the knight on foot, not on a horse, ready for a fight. So we'll position him with sword drawn and shield up for protection against the opponent's immediate strike. For this, I cut an old sword arm of an Imperial soldier in half. This will be connected with the arm from the Stormcast Eternal. We'll use the shoulder with the iconic armor panel. Let's glue them together and they fit perfectly. After this is primed, you'll hardly see our transplantation. Next up, the legs. Stormcasts are actually huge. Let's compare them to a zombie or a normal human miniature. They're easily primarily space marine huge, so our mini should be more humanly sized. At least a little bit. For that, we'll saw off the legs and take just a nudge off this mighty warrior. This will also give us more freedom when repositioning the mini to a slightly different pose. Hmm, this actually kind of reminds me from a scene from a very silly movie. Oh. All right, we we'll call it a draw. Come, Patsy. Oh, oh, I see. Running away, eh? You yellow bastard! Come back here and take what's coming to you. I'll bite your legs off! If you know these guys, you're probably a Monty Python fan like me. If you don't know this clip, watch Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It's fantastic. Okay, back to our project. Time to bring it all together. First, we'll glue the arm back onto the torso. Next up, finally, the head. It's still not fitting, so we cut half of it off. Just for now. This looks and fits a little bit better. Before we fix this back to its full glory, we should take care of the shield. The base for this is going to be the Stormcast shield. I want a flat surface and a more medieval look. First, we cut it into a triangle shape like this and then scrape off the texture. Great, ready for our Knight, I guess. He needs a good name, so do you have any noble suggestions? Leave me one in the comments below. With the shield done, we are getting closer to the pose we are actually looking for. Now it's finally time to fix our lord's back. Bring the green stuff. We'll give it a good mix and fill the gaps. We need to get rid of the last traces of the Stormcast Eternal look. The shoulder pads will get the same treatment as the shield and will be scraped off, all flat and smooth. Final assembly, the legs. 
first left, then right. It's still a large knight, but more compact. Our noble knight's left leg will stand on a small rock like this. Uh, more rocks and sand and this base shall be done. So now we can finally start painting this Bretonian Lord and this is going to be something special. We have a lot of space on this miniature for freehanding heraldic symbols. Most importantly the shield, but also the mini shields on the legs and the shoulder pads which will get some detailed paintings. I base the entire miniature in two colors. Purple magenta from the right side and green from the left. These are going to be the main colors of this Knight of Old. I then dry brush the metallics roughly on top so the base colors will still shine through and let this mini keep the base tones. After painting some leather details, I continue with the helmet. After some initial tests with different undercoats, I try to keep the paint thin so the shadows, the green and the magenta will still show. This gives the mini more depth. Also, this makes the paint job look more dirty and grim darkish. Time to finally move to the heraldics. After a couple of base coats for the shield and the shoulder pads, it's time to design and plan the freehand paintings. First time I try something like this. Time for some paper sketches first. I go classic and try the French lily on the shield. I map out the size of the shield and try a couple of them on paper before I move to the brush and the miniature itself. I'm afraid to mess things up, so I thin the paint big time and add lots of layers. Getting closer, but more Garak Sewer will be added to imitate a gold-ish look and more white afterwards to correct some things and add highlights. This is actually a pretty long process of back and forth until this looks like a lily. I try my best to replicate this on the smaller shields with a lily and a goblet, establish more highlights and call this noble knight done. Show me the beasts, the manticores, the cockatrice, I'll slay them all. We are the shield of Bretonia! What a super fun journey this conversion was. I hope you had fun as well and subscribe for the next big build on this channel. In the meantime, you should watch this video here next, where I customize the ultimate man of the lore for the 41st millennia. You will be surprised.